Hello, my friends, and welcome to Monday Morning Devotions. I'm glad to be with you today. The passage that I've selected for us to hear and to think about today is taken from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, from the 40th chapter. Before I begin to read, I'd like to set a little of the, of the context for you so you can understand what's happening with the people. The people are in exile, <clears throat> and they've been in exile for a while, and they're losing hope. They're losing faith, they're weary, they're worn out, they are fed up with being in exile, and they're longing to see and hear and know God again as they did before. They're longing for a reassurance that this will end at some point. And so Isaiah speaks to the people, and this is what he calls them to do and to remember. So listen now beginning with the 21st verse. <clears throat> have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he, God, who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. It is he who stretches out the heaven like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, says the Lord, or who is my equal? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. <clears throat> These are beautiful words. And they're words that lift us up even today as they did for God's people. The people who were in exile. Now, I, I, I just, I, I stand in awe of what this passage says because it's reminding the people that they have a solid foundation to stand on even though everything around them is in turmoil and in chaos. Listen, I'm going to talk through this and just um, uh, talk about what I, I think it means for us today. Because even as we begin, Isaiah is, is saying, don't you remember? Don't you remember what God has done? Haven't you been told how God is and what God does? Have you forgotten? Since the beginnings of time, since creation, God has been at work in the world. God called you into being, Isaiah is saying to the people. And God is not going to discard you, even though it feels like it right now. Because God is above all of creation. And God knows even the grasshoppers and spreads out a tent for them to live in. In other words, takes care of them. It's God who brings the rulers down and lifts up those who, who are needy, who makes the rulers of the earth fall away in comparison to the ruler that is the Lord our God. 
He says, no sooner do you put the seed in the ground and it begins to sprout. And before it can even form a stem, God knows if it dies away and it's blown away by the wind. So then God says to, uh, to the people through Isaiah, so who, who, what other God does this for you, has done this for you? Do you not ever lift your eyes up and see what God, what I have done for you? Because Isaiah says, listen, he brings out hosts and he tends to those and he's great in strength and mighty in power and he loses no one. And then he says, what are you going to say, people of Israel? Are you going to say, as you're saying, God doesn't have a clue about who I am. God has turned away from us. Everything that God gave to us has been taken away, and we're hopeless. God has turned away. And Isaiah comes back and says, that, that's not true. Have you not heard? Have you not known? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. How can you not remember this? It, it's this God who created you. How can you not remember that this God is an everlasting God who stands above and tends to all of creation. And then he says, essentially, you may grow weary, you may lack strength, but God doesn't. God doesn't grow weary. God doesn't lose strength. God understands everything. There's nothing that is hidden from God. And he strengthens those who are desperately in need of it. He strengthens the weary. He gives strength to the powerless. He lifts up those who are lowly. And even if you're very young, you still get tired. You still go, grow weary. But then he says, for those who wait on the Lord, and what he means is for those who are in communion with God, for those who remember what God has done and what God has promised, when they remember who God is, and they just allow God to do what God needs to do, then they'll be held close. They'll be given the strength that they need to get through. This is, this is so beautiful. For those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God will give us what we need. Now, I have to tell you, um, when I <clears throat> think about this passage, I more often have the words from Josh Groban's hymn on eagles' wings, but it takes this passage, Josh Groban did, took this passage and, um, and images from, the, from Psalm 91 and put them together in this beautiful hymn. It's not in our current hymn book, but it is in the one that's come out after that. But the words are so sustaining and so beautiful. Let's listen just to the uh, refrain. He will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. I need to hear that right now. Maybe you do as well. It's difficult. It's difficult for, it was difficult for the people who lived in exile. They were isolated from their homeland. They were isolated from those traditions and ways of living that they cherished, that they believed were given to them by God. And so they, and they have struggled with this isolation and with this um, exile and this captivity. And now they're weary and they're lo they've lost hope. And Isaiah is the prophet God sends to say, listen to me, this exile is ending. And even though you can't see it right this minute, it is ending. In the meantime, 
You need to look at this experience. God wants you to look at this experience. And in the frame of that experience, remember who God is and take hope from it. In the middle of this exile, instead of saying, God, you've turned your back on us, and we're lost, we're hopeless, you've left us for good. Isaiah is saying, that's not what God is. That's not what God does. God's the God of all creation. Since the very beginnings of the world, of all things, God was there. And God has made promises to you. And though you weren't able to understand at the time, God has kept those promises. And that's the foundation that they are called to stand on and the foundation that we are called to stand on as well right now. Yes, it's a very difficult time for us. It continues to be. There's hope. I was so thrilled when I got my first of the two vaccination shots a couple of three couple of weeks ago and I anticipate getting the third one realistically I realize there are um, there are variants of the virus out there that may that may um, uh, be um, immune to the to the vaccination there are changes and that are coming and we may need booster shots and some of us can get the shots now and some of you are young and a younger <laughs> and have to wait a little while um, so but but the exile that we now live in is ending and in the meantime this call by Isaiah is to those to God's people then and to God's people now is to see what's happening and try to reframe this whole experience as a way of coming to understand change is part of living death is part of living but underneath it all over it all and around it all is the foundation is the god who gives us the foundation to go forward and to live with hope and with optimism this is the God who holds us in the palm of God's hand. This is the God that lifts us up when we feel that we cannot take one step more. And in right now and in this time, I, I assume you feel the same. I often feel, God, I can't do this one more day. I can't live through this, handle the anxiety that goes with it, find ways to reach out to other people and keep my spirits up. It's just very hard. And then comes these words. God will lift you up on eagle's wings. God will give you the energy for the next step because, and this is where I come down, because God has done that. And God promises to do that. And God does not break promises. God holds us in God's care the same way God holds all of creation. And at some point, the pandemic will end and we will have learned a lot, not just techno technologically, we will have learned a lot about ourselves We'll, we'll have learned a lot about each other. We will have learned that indeed we're stronger than we think we are. And thanks be to God for that. That we're more creative than we thought we were. That we are um, determined not to lose what has been given to us. The gift of being the people of God and of worshiping and working for the betterment of God's kingdom. We have learned ourselves who we are and that no matter the struggle we have God to rely on and we will come through it and of course we all un ultimately understand that we are people of the resurrection the interim is a broken life because it's a broken world and yet God with us and in the middle of all that's happening sustains us and lifts us up. <clears throat> Before we have a prayer, I'll share with you that um, that 
I, my secret desire, <laughs> one of many, I guess, had, but this one's real, really real. I've always wanted to fly. Now, I don't mean um, necessarily like a bird, and I certainly don't mean like um, fly an airplane. I don't mean um, like mm, Tinkerbell in Peter Pan. Just to, to rise up and be weightless above everything and to move with this kind of freedom that is um, it, it's just exhilarating and I dream about it and I think about it and I'm convinced that someday I'm going to fly but the point is this if you have images that sustain you and support you and words of scripture that speak to your heart then now is the time, as we know that the end is in sight for this pandemic, now is the time to hold those scriptures close, and particularly this one, whether you've always wanted to fly or not. No, it is because the image is very real in whatever form you need it to be. God is present. God cares. God oversees. God gives us strength. God, God guides us through. God in Christ has filled us up and taken away the exhaustion that comes from the things that are around us. And so, my friends, be uplifted. Be joyful in your heart, even in the midst of sadness and anger and fear and anxiety, because God is with us and God's lifting us up God keeps us and loves us. Let's have a prayer. Gracious God, we grow weary. We are frightened. We get anxious. We're afraid to be joyful for fear those hopes will be dashed by the news that comes tomorrow. And yet, this passage from Isaiah and all these ancient words of scriptures, scripture call us to a faith that, that lets us release our fear, release our anxiety, that let, uh, lets us know that we are in your loving hands and though this world, broken world, brings its own set of pain and sorrow and grief, we also have the joy of knowing that you tend to all creation, that you created us, you value us, you love us enough to die for us, and that in Christ we live. We give you thanks for your presence among us, for the gift of your Son. We give you thanks for the gift of fellowship, even in these difficult times. Keep our spirits and our hearts focused on you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with me. I look forward to seeing you next week.